Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Hope you've had a good week. I'm in the stall with Mr. Adam. We had a little baby get really sick and the University of Tennessee has jumped in and helped us out. And you know what? We have saved the day, y'all. Saved the day. All right, Mr. Adam is eating his breakfast. He's about to get his final treatment. We had to go to the University of Tennessee uh, Vet Hospital uh, and take a specimen uh, just a couple of days ago, last Thursday. And um, long story short, thank goodness we did because uh, we had a wonderful vet there help us out and we tested our poop, runny diarrhea poop. We're not gonna make a full video about this, but you really need to be proactive with these goats in particular, any animal, but when they start to separate themselves or if you see signs of diarrhea, you really wanna jump on that because it doesn't take very long for them to dehydrate. And once they start dehydrating and stop eating, you're on a serious downhill battle or uphill battle. You're going downhill, but you're fighting uphill. It's just like you just can't win. So long story short, uh, they tested the specimen and they didn't find anything but potential coccidiosis eggs. So we initially treated him with some dewormers as she told us to, have been doing a lot of therapy with electrolytes and a lot of different things, checking temperature, all of that sort of stuff. And we switched gears. You can switch gears to Albon or Corid, and we did. And we've also been giving B12 shots because you have to, if you, if you give Corid, you have to supplement also in addition to that uh, because of the thiamine issues. So long story short, we're on the last day of therapy. He is eating, he is giving poopies, he is walking, he's being a normal little goat. We haven't ha seen any diarrhea in three days now. I mean, once we knew what we were dealing with and once we knew how to do it, which, you know, you can guess, once you do this after so many years, you can guess, but you may not be right. And we were on the right track from the get-go. So it shows you that if you can get on the right track from the early get-go, you can save the day. Excuse me, excuse me, Adam. You're not supposed to be eating the turkey food. What are you doing? Looking good, brother. Hi, Katniss. How are you? You like being out? Oh, Tolly. Good job, everybody. Everybody is happy, happy, happy. Hey, girlfriend. Okay, Mr. Adam. We have new developments out here. We have a new, some new feeding stations for all the goaty goats. Yes. Yeah, baby. Woo. Sister. Nutball, hey, I don't think you're taking your job very serious these days, girlfriend. Yeah, that's a big no-no. What? You crazy thing. Tolly, are you helping with the wild one here? Uh-uh-uh, uh-uh-uh. No, 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 no chasing goats. This is going to be a long road, y'all. Give me that, you silly. So today is the first day of Enoli being on the leash when we come out to the pasture. And yes, it's windy, oh my gosh. And right now, she's not taking it very serious, but here's why we're doing it. So Miss Enoli has gotten very comfortable with the farm. <laughs> Okay, and she wants to play. She wants to run. And at times, come here, sister. Okay, let's 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 get real here. Hey, hey, show everybody you're a serious livestock guardian dog. Can you do that? We want her to be with the goats, but we don't want to be hurting or chasing the goats. We don't want to be play snipping at the goats. This is a major learning curve because she's a puppy. So this is getting her with the goats on, you know, every day, several times a day, but now we have to learn our boundaries. So this is gonna be a major curve. 
and something we're going to be fighting for a while because, you know, we're going to be entering that teenage stage at about six, seven months, and things can get a little hairy at that time, right? She does not like the boundary. It's okay. She's excited. Come over here with your buddies. Okay, see? Right, good. Easy, yeah. Sniffing. We're excited. Overexcited. <laughs> Easy. Good. Hello. You look so good. Everything's good, everybody. Everybody looks good. Eating, drinking, dry, good old poopies. All right. All right. All brothers are banded. Let's move on. All right. So this is the thing. So we're talking about all the things that you're going to want to do when you finally move to your forever homestead. When you get that property. You know, the thing is, is if you're like we are, we were already homesteading, attempting to, right? And we've moved everything to this new property. And we've had to go through the whole process of readjusting the farm, watching what's happening on our property, live through 20, early 2021, 2020 and early 2021 right now, like you are. And, you know, all the thing, all the curveballs coming at you. And the thing is, is I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. So this video is to kind of talk myself down and to talk to you about the things that maybe you're going to want to do, the things that like we're trying to do, the timeline of it all, and a reminder that as they always say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Honey, I think you look good. You're my Viking. That's a pirate. <laughs> so I've always told you from sheer experience that it's going to take you at least a year or two to know what you're going to want to do on your farm because you have to get used to the land. You especially want to see what it, what happens and how things uh, get affected during each season. And you may not necessarily find that out the first year. The first year may be a really dry year for you. Then the second year rolls around and whoa, lo and behold, it's like a monsoon. And suddenly you've got a pond somewhere that you never suspected you'd ever have a pond. You understand what I'm saying? So we're still in the process of sort of figuring some of that out. But the one thing that we do know is we have a spot that was a previous garden spot. Now, I don't think this thing has probably been tilled or gardened or really messed with in at least 10 years. In fact, I spoke with the uh, one of our neighbors about it and who was familiar with it. And he was like, I know that they used to garden there years ago, but it's been a long time. So the ground has been resting. So we have been trying to decide what will we do with it? Well, we've left it alone. Well, now I will tell you, since y'all think I'm so weird with my visions and my dreams and my <laughs> whatever, I'm gonna dance like Stevie Nicks in a video, but I'm, I am, I'm just gonna be like Stevie Nicks and do some dreams and stuff like that. But I did dream that I am supposed to plant fruit trees in this area two nights ago. Don't know how this happened or why this happened. It was very vivid. It was very, very blunt, very wide open, very vivid. Uh, I dreamed that we were being told, in a sense I was, to plant fruit trees here. Now, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I know when I have a sign or maybe something's telling me to do something, and the Lord works in mysterious ways. So I think we're supposed to utilize our resources and our land as best as we can. And so I think this is what we're gonna do. Let's see. Okay, honey, I told them that I had a dream that we are supposed to put fruit trees here. Does that sound normal to you? Mm-hmm. Okay, just make, see, he thinks I, I'm not that crazy. Okie dokie, you can see what I'm talking about. We need to measure this off, but you can see we already have it sectioned off with barbed wire. Now that was done to keep deer out. 
and some of the fencing has fallen. So we have actually fenced away from this so our animals don't get near any of this. So that was my first request as far as all of our fencing with our field. You can see we've kept a, a segment away from the barbed wire. So the cows and everybody is super safe. But this is a pretty large area. Now you can see, unfortunately, in order to really get in here and garden, we're gonna have to work on the land. We got all kinds of funky cold Medina going on. So my suggestion was, why don't we just do as the dream says and make it an orchard? Miss Lovey, Miss Lovey, if I put in an apple orchard, Boy, you'd have lots of treats down here, baby. Ooh. Okay, so you were thinking by the looks, we measured this before, but I, and I, I can't remember. We're gonna have to come out here later and do it, but you said at least three rows. I mean, it look, it's pretty bodacious. I think at least three rows wide, but then we need to measure the length for depth. So obviously this is a project that's not something that's gonna be you know, today and tomorrow, we can start it. It's, and that's the whole point of this video. And to bring my stress level down is I'm trying to do too much at one time. Oh. <laughs> so that's the thing I have to tell myself, don't I, I tell everybody, I have to start, I do this now every day, at least twice a day. And it may get on your nerves, I say, what are the positives of today? What did we get done today? What are we, what did we move forward with today? And I have to list them out in my mind because it reminds me that we, we continue to make progress. Some days are more productive than others or different things, but you know, we're doing this, we got this done or whatever. So how many trees do you think we could start with? Maybe to start, I guess it depends on price obviously. And what would you be interested in starting with? Well, depending on price, um, apples and pears, I think, are the two basics. Yeah, I don't think I want to do peaches. Peaches are hard here. Yeah. We've had some success with apples already, and we know pears grow good in the area, so that might be a good place to start. So I guess we need to figure all of that out. Mm -hmm. So, what? <laughs> now, don't be shy. Kind of like Burt Reynolds there, honey. This is more like James Bond for your eyes only. <laughs> so we have our little doohickey that is more accurate. You're just gonna you're just gonna clod hop it and guess. I'm gonna clod hop it. He's okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay, Sparky. What was your math? <laughs> I paced off 62 paces, an average. I'm probably undercutting a little bit, about two feet per step. That's 120 feet. Trees, big trees, normal fruit trees, not dwarfs, usually tell you to put them about 15 to 20 feet apart. So I went 20. That would be six trees per row at three trees wide. So we could probably put 18 trees in this space. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm, I'm processing what you're saying. You know, Do I, I to, need to talk slower? I, with math, yes. So I'm thinking semi-dwarf. We'll have to look. Yeah. We'll have to look. I know that we're at the edge of the end of the season for fruit trees right now. So if we're going to do it, we really need to do it this week and then look at it in the fall again. So I think if you think 18 is the magic number, I think we could easily put in 6 to 10 trees. Okay. Yeah, I think 18 is definitely a number. Get your shovel, baby. All right. So this is the thing. So it's a, a season by season a year by year thing. And if you're like me, you want things done yesterday and you're raising the kids and you're homeschooling the kids and you gotta do the laundry and you know, you gotta clean your house and cook a chicken casserole and everything else in between. And then you are literally building a homestead. So I'm trying to, I'm just really excited that finally we're into the next year. And so now we can start making more decisions and make more changes, it, you know, this last year. And, and you'll go through this too. You're just trying to get there, you know, and, and get there and make sure everybody is, you know, standing up and breathing, you know, sort of thing. So we're kind of past that phase. We're entering into the establishment phase. And so, you know, that, that means some other things might have to be a little bit less this year. In other words, 
if I'm trying to really establish flower gardens, perennials, um, you know, a woodshed, orchard, and all of that, those are my focuses this year. I may pull back a little bit on planting corn because at the end of the day, you, me, we're only so many people. We're one person or a family. And, excuse me, I'm talking. You know, all of these things, and there's only so much time in the day, you know, and, and you need to rest, and you need family time, and you need time with your ancestry and to go to church. So, got to remember these things, keep them focused. And you know what? I'm glad I made this video because the berries are now starting to bloom. We just came out of dogwood winter, and looky here. I spy with my little eye, honeysuckle. Guys, I love you. Thanks for being here on the channel. I'll let you know what we're doing here. I'm excited. I think this is good. We're gonna have to rearrange some things and work with some things. We're gonna have to run a water line down here to make sure that we can, you know, make sure that everything gets watered, but it's time to go shopping. We'll see you on the next video. 